Greetings siblings, welcome to my sketching video. A lot of you guys have requested a sketching tutorial, so here we go. And by a lot, I mean three people have asked me. I don't really want to call this a tutorial though, this is more like how I do it. If Andrew Loomis has the Loomis method of sketching, I have the trust me bro method that has been tested and licensed. Don't look that up. One of the most important things to prepare is the reference. You can use Pinterest or Google image even though it kinda sucks. Since I mostly do portraits, I don't use that many references just for the face anatomy character reference, clothes, and hair. You might need more or less depending on what you're drawing. Lately, I've been painting with grayscale because it really improves my rendering. So on Pinterest, I look for grayscale portrait photography. Grayscale pictures usually have great lighting and shadows, so they're perfect for you to study. You can also use other people's art if you haven't found your art style or wanna improve your own. For semi-realism, I recommend Coke's Illust, Gouet's Pillion, or Reno Tuna for more stylized drawing. Or just browse randomly on Pinterest and you'd find what you like. My feet is so uh, thirsty. If you're an IB Spain user, you can use the reference window by clicking this toggle thing and turning on the reference window. Then just pick your references. Before we're sketching with this reference, I will show you how I simplify facial features because my art style is not hyperrealism and I will not draw exactly like my references. Let's start with the eyes. Generally, the eyes are almond shaped, kinda like this. <laughs> Sorry, but I usually draw them sharper and more angular with thick eyeliner to give that anime look. To really simplify it, I draw eyes like this. I tend to sketch the eyebrows quite detailed, but you can just draw it simply like this. For noses, let me just say that it's one of the facial features that has 85% chance to look weird the more detailed you draw it, unless you're a nose maestro. So I always draw it really simply and add details later in the painting stage. I don't even draw the nose bridge when drawing the front view. I also simplify the nostrils into unfinished triangle. I don't know, I just like drawing it like this, but you can make it more rounded if you want. Lips also tend to look weird the more detailed you draw it, but certain art styles can pull it off beautifully. Similar with nose, I also draw it really simply. I don't like to draw the upper lips because it looks weird in my style, so I just draw a little both on top to indicate the upper lip. All details will be added during the rendering process. So to put it really simply, I draw these two dots. The mouth is the biggest part and this is the upper lip. Let's put quotation marks on that. And finally, the lower lip. This will show up later in the video. So keep it somewhere in your brain, the corner is fine. Now let's talk about the most frequently asked question in my videos. What brushes do I use? I literally have one video dedicated to it. But anyway, open the brush library, scroll down, and there it is, pencil graphite. This is the brush I've been using ever since I first used Ibis Paint. It's great for sketching, coloring, rendering, everything. I also use another brush called Deep Pen Heart. The name sounds like you're dipping your pen with passion. This brush is great for line art, also sketching and drawing small little things, such as my happiness. You can start by tracing the guidelines from your references if you're still new to anatomy. But remember, only the guidelines, not the entire thing. I usually start with a circle around this big. There is no rule on how big the circle is, but I would recommend that you don't cover the skull. And then let's draw a cross. I prefer drawing curved lines rather than straight lines because the head is a 3D. It's not a flat thing. And drawing curved lines help me to see it as 3D. So the vertical line, I align it with the chin and the horizontal line with the inner corners of the eyes. When tracing the face, focus on the angle. From this angle, we can see that her jawline looks sharper and her cheekbone is more prominent. Now draw the entire skull. It's fine if it's not too accurate, we can always fix it later. You can use it as is and start sketching your actual drawing, or you can also mark where the facial features are so it's easier to follow. But I recommend redrawing your guidelines to practice sketching. Consult your references if needed. And it doesn't have to be the exact copy of the previous guideline. At the end of the day, the most important thing is that your art looks good and you understand anatomy a little bit better. So don't treat the guidelines like your tiger mom. And don't worry about shapes or cleanliness for now. This is just a rough sketch. We're just figuring out where things should go. Use liquify to fix it if needed. By the way, for half body or full body sketches, I always draw the silhouettes first 
so I can get the big shapes of the pose. Silhouette is very important, especially in character design, because you can tell a character's personality only from silhouettes. I will also start sketching her clothes. I found this suit picture on Pinterest and I was like, oh my god, that looks so sharp and slick. I bet Raiden would look great in it. I draw my fair share of suits so I can imagine how they would look like from different angles, but if you can't, go to Pinterest and type suit woman side view or something like that and you'll find what you need. This also applies to different types of clothing. This is starting to hurt my eyes, so let me change it into multiply. There we go. I chose this reference because I want to capture the hair flow. It looks dynamic and suits really well with Raiden's hairstyle. I think it would look better if her braids are on the other side and maybe exaggerate the hair flow. Now lower the opacity and start drawing the cleaner sketch. This is when all the simplifications come into play. Remember this part of the video a few minutes ago? Hope you've been paying attention. There will be a test later on. No, there won't. Since this angle is quite tricky, you can use other people's art with similar angle as reference to see how they simplify it. Writing this looks quite alright. It's better to draw it with as little detail as possible, especially if you want to render it later on. I tend to draw the face bigger in the rough sketch, so I have to make some adjustments when cleaning up the sketch. That's why you shouldn't treat your rough sketch as an absolute thing. Your sketches can change as you progress. I also draw her face more rounded than the reference, so she looks more youthful. I think we can show her forehead a little bit. Oh my god, you know who she looks like in this hairstyle? Well, I don't know the specific name or character, but she looks like a female protagonist from an old shoujo manga. I really like Raiden's hairpiece, so I will draw it in my sketch. Wait, I almost forgot. I have my stabilizer off the entire time I'm sketching. Stabilizer is great for line art, essential even, but it restricts my movement when sketching so I always have it off. You can have it on if you want, but I don't recommend like having it on max because it really restricts your movement. I mentioned multiple times that it's better to sketch with as little detail as possible, but it really depends on your needs. For line art and rendering, yes because messy sketches are really distracting. But messy sketches can be really aesthetic and artistic, and honestly, they tend to look more charming, I suppose, than the line art. Lately, I don't like drawing characters until they cover the bottom half of the canvas, if you know what I mean. So I just leave it like this. It looks more artistic too. Now, what to do after you're done sketching? Well, you can clean it up even more if you think it's still too messy. You can line art or turn it into a complete painting. Grayscale is a great way to paint. I will talk more about it later. You can also add more things to the character, such as accessories or change up their clothing and hairstyle. This is called iterations in character design. Take some elements from Raiden's original character design and add them to your fan art. I'm just gonna shade this sketch. I won't be turning it into a painting right now. So what I do is cover the whole sketch with light gray and then shade it with darker tones very simply, only on parts with dark shadows. Then I highlight it with an even lighter gray. Just draw messy lines like this, like you don't care about the shading, but it turns out artistic anyway, you know, the kind that makes your friends jealous. Afterwards, you can edit by using brightness and contrast until you get your desired shades of grey. And you can post it on Instagram or other social media platform you use as is because a lot of people like looking at sketches. Like, messy sketches have that charm that you cannot find in a painting or in, a, in line arts even. If you ever feel like your line art looks worse than your sketch, just post your sketch. And that's about it. See ya!